thanks for staying with us. All right, so we got a message from a, a lawyer living abroad, and she was quite concerned about the rising, uh, rising cases of divorce amongst Nigerians living abroad. They said that there are factors like no access to family support in the diaspora, and um, says sometimes they have issues with helping around the house. And they said, according to the lawyer in Canada, there are about 50 cases of divorce proceedings at the moment, and Nigerian couples are topping the chart. Now, we've discussed this matter before, right? It's not new. But we got this distress call from this lawyer in Canada specifically, and he was saying that, listen, we need to have a conversation around why successful or seemingly successful marriages in Nigeria, when they finally migrate to Canada and they are abroad, within two years, things totally disintegrate. Hmm. So what is happening? What, what, what exactly is wrong? Is it a new system? Is that the foundation was faulty? Or what exactly is in the new world <clears throat> that is causing two adults not to be able to stay together in their marriages? And that's really our talk for the next 30 minutes. You can join the conversation on 081-270-53687-091390-7694. You can also send us message on YouTube and Facebook. We'll be happy to read your message. And please, if you're in the abroad, this is your call. Please call us. We'd like to know what's going on. If you have a successful marriage, please call us. Because uh, we need to know you how are doing. you're doing <laughs> it. Because different. This, call, this distress cause was just too much. Um, Taka, uh, I'd like you to go ahead. Let please. me start. So, um, one of the things that every... Every plant, nature, prepares you for a condition, an environment. So a cocoa has where it does well, if it functions ah. well. You know, you have palm trees that, if you go to the Niger Delta, that's Edo Delta, that's palm for mm. you. Um, Undo palm. There is an area for cashew that you know this is where cashew is. I can, I can love granite. I can't come and plant granite in Lagos. There are areas that are meant for granite. So some... The environment is important to how well something would go do. So Nigeria has produced two full adults, and they've done well in Nigeria, seemingly doing well. Everything is going on fine. And then you uproot that cocoa tree and take it to Canada, Canada where there is snow. There is all the things that should make the cocoa blossom is no longer available. Mm. The cocoa needs to adapt or else mm. cocoa will die. Mm. So I think that most marriages refuse to adapt to the environment where they move to, mm. and then death happens to them. Of course, we need to show that. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's <laughs> yeah, please, let's go for it. Because really, yes. the analogy do it does make sense. Yes. You know, I mean, that's, that, that, that's really brilliant. Yeah. But, but you see, if, if that is using the food, what if soil? Soil is the same in America. Uh, Nigeria, and it's still soil, it's still manure, it's still the same yeah, process, right? There are different types, yeah, different types of soil. Yeah, yeah, but it's still soil, you need to soil. So there are different, different their, kinds of... How to adapt. The, the point mm. is, there are different kinds of marriages. Mm. There is the, uh, uh, what they call the poly polygamous marriages, there is the marriage, there is a rich issue. So there are different types of soils, mm. but the, the objective of the soil is mm. to grow the plant, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So as long as you're in soil, Regardless of where you are, your job is to grow the plant. Yeah. That's, what I'm, that's the analogy I'm using. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm using your example that yeah. you can be the fruit or you can choose to be the soil. That mm. I am, even though I am, I'm in Nigerian soil in this place, my job is I will grow the kind of plants I can grow in Canada. Exactly. I'll grow a Canada plant. Mm. I am a soil. I will grow it. So I'm just using that analogy in a different way, mm. which, which is also... Um, so yeah, uh, let, let me um, use another analogy, which <laughs> is... <laughs> um, oxygen is oxygen everywhere in the mm. world. And marriage is marriage everywhere in the world. Marriage is something that was created by, you know, God and is universal. When we understand that the oxygen we breathe in Nigeria is the same oxygen we're going to breathe in Canada, we make room for it to breathe. Okay, you go there and you see that, okay, maybe I need to wear a, a certain type of mask to be able to breathe it properly. Then you adjust, you wear that mask because it's still the same air. You still have the responsibility to breathe it in and breathe it out. That's your responsibility. So what I see is that when marriage gets abroad, because right here, what we term as success is where it seems like one person takes more of the responsibility of keeping the home and the other person goes ahead to, okay, I'm the man, I'm bringing in the money. That's how we define successful marriages. When you now get to a different climb where the dynamics have changed, everybody's now going to work, everybody's working. Here we can afford to have house helps. 
have uh, grandma here, grandma there, I'm going out, take care of my kids. You go there, you are alone. This is where the essence of marriage should come in. Mm. Companionship, teamwork. You're working together as a team. That means when I'm cooking, you're helping me with the dishes because nobody would do it for us. But if you now think with the mentality that you came with, that it will work without the dynamics you came with. So you want to take the fruit without the sacrifice. Uh-uh, it won't work. Mm. That's why we have an issue. And I think that is what we should be addressing. The mindset of men and women when they want to leave the shores of this country should change. Have a conversation. We're going to talk about this. You know, Dale, now, I can afford to have one Iyaka lead here and have this person here. We are going to be on our own. How do we address it? So we don't have those sort of conversations. And then we get there, and everybody's expecting, it's your job now. You are the one to do this. You are the one to do that. Of course, we're going to have issues. Even here, we have issues in marriages where people are expecting that this job is meant for you. This is your responsibility. Gender that roles. is your responsibility. Yeah, gender mm. roles. So you go there. And you have this conversation. There's no in-law that will call you and blame one person. Mm. You have to fix it yourself. Mm. So let's have that conversation. I have, yeah, I have a, I sat down with a lady who lived abroad or most of her life, met her husband abroad. They lived in America, she said. And then the husband got a really good job in Nigeria and he moved. And she wasn't happy. She said their marriage had changed. Mm. She said where they used to spend time and do everything together. They would sit, they would organize their day together. Things were different. She said, yes, yeah, she lives in a bigger house now. She has help, but she doesn't see her husband anymore. He's always out with the boys, hanging out. Mm. Yes, there's money. She can buy a lot of things, but he's not there anymore. So that's why that your analogy just makes sense, which is when you move something from one place to the other, then you need to look for all the things to adapt, mm. to adjust, or you die. And the important thing now is if we understand that first this is a marriage and we want to be together, what are the tools that we need to adapt, what mm. are the tools that we need to, as we always say every day, is communication, is comprehension, is caring. Do I care enough about you to want to sit down and have this conversation concerning what we need to do differently? And Nigerian men abroad open to that conversation with their wives that have joined them. Our Nigerian women open to the conversations with their husbands abroad, like, this is different. Yes, <laughs> I used to be the one that would bring in the bread when we're in Nigeria. Now you have to, you know, you have to step yeah, in wait. one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And she says, okay, I'm willing to do it, but you still want me to come home and cook and clean and everything. How do you help me in that, you know, in that, um, exactly. in that situation? So until, I think it, what, what is happening is there's pride, probably stubbornness, refusing to communicate. And that would affect, using your analogy, it would affect plants anywhere if you refuse to do the work that's needed to be done. If you had a plant somewhere where it didn't need so much care, rain will fall on it, or sun, or, and everything, it, you know, and but it you will know, thrive. You know, Mara, There's a place where you need to use them. Um, if hands. you move it, you use your hands, mm. you need to care for it daily. Are you prepared to take up those tools to work on your marriage, to make sure it works, given your new environment? So, one of the analogies that we, that we used earlier, I think for BC, was that here, for example, in Nigeria, the, the external support you get is maybe your in-laws, mm. either positive or negative, right? But abroad, the excess of what you get is the system. Yeah. Mm. The system is for you, especially as a woman. The system supports you ho-ha. So you know that, okay, if I demand that you have to clean the house, if I demand, I, I can demand it. But you are coming from a place where once your in-law calls in or somebody, it's a system that, so the, the social system supports mm. you here, but over there is the, is the American system. So how does a man or woman switch? It's so difficult to switch, to know, okay, right now, I, ha I have a, a whole government that if I rob people, because I called 911 <laughs> and I said, this man has refused to do this, 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 this. He can be arrested and queried because he's not taking care of his children, maybe a certain amount of money. But here, I can't do that. So how do I, I feel empowered. I'm in Canada now. I am an empowered woman. Mm. I can get, I can demand. You know, you're not doing anything in America, in Nigeria. I can demand that you do something. Shouldn't I use that empowered system for, for the betterment of my children? Or, or I'll say, oh, because I'm African. Let me not call the police. So let me just manage ourselves. Is, is, that, is that the wisdom we're asking women to go with when they live abroad? Have I, have I lost you? No. Okay. No. So okay. What, what I think you're saying is, um, and my understanding is, as you mentioned, in Nigeria, the system is the family. So your family will step in mm -hmm. and help to solve the issues, where, yes. where, whatever they are. But when you live abroad, the, the system, I mean, is the Don't system. Stay. And usually the own is even more stringent. His divorce and his um, alimony and his child yeah. support quickly. So I don't think 
No, I don't think any reasonable married couple that have loved each other and wanting to work out will just go there immediately, just want to jump on a system to make sure we're divorced. It has to be continuous breakdown of communication. And the person will only reach out to the only system that they can reach out to. Usually, there'll be lots of calls back home to Nigeria. Mommy, talk to him. Daddy, talk to him. You know, everybody is trying to chip in. Eventually, that person, either the husband or wife, relies on the system. In Africa, where we say it's a marriage is a family affair, so you have everyone speaking and speaking, but we still have Nigerians going to court here now. We still have them <laughs> going to... Divorcing, but we now use yeah. a different... Because the system does not really implement what it... Or you are unable to implement it... They say find different ways where they will say, tell a woman, you stay longer than you really want to stay in a home because you need to make sure you provide security for your children. Mm -hmm. There, you know that immediately you're unhappy and you have discussed all the different options it's not working, you can leave and still there'll be security for your children. It's mm -hmm. just different things and... Okay, so let me, let me come in. I, I get what you're saying. And um, I've, in the society here, when you divorce, in most cases, the woman loses. It is when things have become extremely like threatening that things now like deteriorate and the divorce would happen. Over there, in developed countries, the system supports a woman that when you divorce, she doesn't lose. Mm -hmm. As long as the man has a good job, you you better you will pay my rent, you will pay Take child support, children. and my income will still be supporting me. So like the system supports, it defends that woman, and so it's a case of. If, if we're in Nigeria, you can get away with this one. We are here now, you cannot get away with what you're doing. So there, there, there's a difference in what is going on there. I also believe that... We Should a have, woman embrace that option or not embrace that option? What happens is most women tend to embrace that option, which is, a, which is bad, and it, and it is based on the environment you keep. When everybody... If, I, 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 was, I was in the US recently, and a man was telling me that, that these people that you met... Because I was saying, I met these girls in Atlanta, I said, these people that I've deliberately kept my wife from meeting them because everyone that meets them, they divorce. They are a clique of empowered divorces. They club, they have fun. When you meet them, you see the love, the happiness, the joy. They have their children. They drop their children with their spouse two times in a month. Like, they are living the life. Mm. You begin to think that being single and being free to mingle everywhere is attractive and that they keep growing in size, that he's seen them. And he knows that anybody that relocates here will say, don't let your, family, your wife get close to this group of people because they will negatively influence you. But if you stay with the family-oriented ones, you adopt mechanism to empower your marriage to flourish. So I think we should start, Nigerians should start creating a hub of themselves. That's what works with Indians. The Indians have a circle of, all of us are Indians, we support each other. If Nigerian happy marriages protect themselves, you would absorb the good in that environment rather than okay, absorbing let me the... Take Division Ade around. calling from London. Good morning, Ade. Are you there? Well, let's hear. And, uh, yes, and good morning. How are you? Brody. Brody. Very good. Go ahead, please. You're live. Uh, I think uh, I will agree with top uh, analogy. It, it really, really makes sense. Because uh, there's a different scenario when you live in the diaspora. And when you are, are married now for 32 years, oh. I thank God everything is fine. Not that there is no up and down, but we are fine. Mm. But what I'm saying is this. Majority of the issues it tend to do with the ladies. Sorry to say that. Because of ego. Because in the Asura, ladies are respected more than the men. Because whatever they say, the government believes them okay. than the husband. So mm. when they notice that, as soon as they come from Nigeria, when they notice that they have the upper hand, then they misbehave. So the other will not be able to control her hmm. anymore. Not that because uh, 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 somebody is in Nigeria, the husband, the wife is in America, and they are not communicating, they are not happy. No, no, no. There are many people that they got job in Nigeria, they, their spouse is here, and they are fine. So it is less for the ladies. If the ladies submit, hmm. no matter the salary or whatever, then the marriage will go on fine. Mr. Ade, please, 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 let me, let me, yeah. Mr. Ade, let me stay with you for a second. Please explain to me what control means. When you say a man is able to control, help me define what it means. <laughs> I'm not hearing you properly. So when you say that when they come to, when they come abroad, <laughs> the men are unable to control, many people would like to understand what that, what you mean by that. So it's not um, relative. Oh my God, this network. Oh, oh, what I mean by... Oh. Control. 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 
What does control mean to you? Oh, What's oh, control? Okay, okay. Between spouses, okay. yeah. Let me, let me explain to you. Let yeah. me explain to you. Uh, I think uh, Tokyo has just said something similar. For example, you are here in the Asura, you are married, everybody is happy. And one day your wife just came and said, uh, one of our colleagues, uh, our friend's friend, she's doing some, he's having a party in uh, Paris, and you are in London, and she would like to go there. And you now say, no, we can't go to Paris for that party. I have a family, I'm going somewhere. I was going to stay at home. The lady said, no, no, I have to go. It's my close friend. I have to go. And she left for Paris. That marriage will start to crack from that place. Mm. That man will not notice it because this lady is now having good money. She has seen life. She's exposed. Okay. Then the media will call. Man, okay. man doesn't like that. Mm. Man doesn't like that. Okay. But are you still forgetting your illustration one day on this place? When you say you are decorating your children's room with your children, and your husband came into the house and said, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? And you say, okay, children, let's take it down. Let's take it down. Really, you are taking it down. Your husband came and said, okay, okay, you can do it now. That's women. That's what we like. You have right. to Thank you, Mr. Ade, so for, you for clarifying that for us. I wanted to know what he meant by that. So, what, what, so a Nigerian man, especially those abroad, is saying, listen, the, the kind of um, respect you have for my decision, Mm. That you that when I tell you something in Nigeria, I say, okay, you're not going to that party, and I give you my reasons, and you you you, you find it easily to accept when you're here. When you go abroad, and I say you're not going for that party, I expect you to give me that same regard. Don't question why why I'm saying that. Don't begin to feel you can challenge my decision <laughs> that you're not going to that party. That's the issue. That that's the definition of. Crime. I wanted to be sure I understood. Mm. Yes. So yes, um, I think um, what I am seeing, and I may be wrong, is. A lot of women are waking up from oppression. Uh, they are now seeing, you know, when you have a system that supports you, you are likely to be more assertive, to say, this is really what I want and I want to have it. But when you are coming from a system that really doesn't support you, the crux is on you to build a home. Whether mm. the man is at fault or not, mm. you are the wife. Go back and apologize. Go back and build a home. Just Go like back and say sorry, just like we discussed yesterday. Mm. And then you swallow it. And it's okay, I have to build a home. If I leave now, the society will blame me. They won't even ask me what happened. Why didn't you build your home? And then you go to a place that does not shout at you and say, go back and build the home. But it's okay, you have legitimate concerns. Let's talk about it. So it gives women more confidence to say, you can't just treat me anyhow now. This is, a for this is not like before. This is a foreign land. You have to listen to me too. So my That's question one. is, no, why, on. so I want you to stay on that. Okay. So why are men finding it difficult, therefore, to accept that we're in a new place? Mm. The way I used to talk to BC mm. in Nigeria, mm. I can't talk to her like that anymore mm. because she is protected by the system. Mm. Why, why, is, why is a man finding it difficult to speak to, relate with you differently? Because it's their wiring in this country. Their wiring is that they are uh, the man, they are the authority, they are in control, they must take charge. That's the wiring. And the wiring of women is, is to submit, submit, is to be flexible. You be flexible, you don't argue, you, must, you are the one to compromise, mm. not the other way. Now they go to a system where we are seen as equals. Mm. I am me, you are you, we are coming together to work. If we do not work as a team, we are going to have issues. Nobody is going to and be... And they are carrying the social you know, construct of Nigeria. Exactly, to that's where the problem is. But so, I also wanted to okay. say something that uh, some... Women are beginning to, some Nigerian women that I've heard, are beginning to uh, complain that they see these Nigerian men marry foreign women and treat them different. Hey. Yes. They say they treat them different. You see them, they are loving, they are caring. They do not use the sort of words they use on them. Now, why don't, can't they, Thank as you. Nigerian women, you get the why. same form of treatment? Thank so you. So the thing is, you marry a foreigner. You know the laws of the land. You obey the laws of the yeah. land. You form the love and the respect yeah. because of yeah. what you're getting. You marry your own person and you feel... Is it not you? We, we came from the same place now. We came from the same can. village we'll now. We'll come to that. Let me take this call from Manchester. They'll come to that. Good morning. Are you there? Hello. Good morning. Are you there? Good morning. Good morning. Share your life. Go ahead, please. That's great. So I was just going to say, um, well, I'm trying please. to continue. I can't hear you. Go ahead, please. So, all right. Okay. So. For me, anyway, what I, you know, I came to the UK at the age of 18, and I'm 40 now. Um, what the, the first thing I've noticed is not so much of the control. I just think, naturally, like the previous caller did say, um, you know, the government supports the women more, and I think it creates. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? You go ahead, Shay. All right, can you hear me okay? Yes, yes we, we can. can. Go ahead, please. Okay, so the system does 
definitely support the, the man, I'm sorry, the woman more than the man. And are you still struggling to hear me? That's see if we cannot hear him. It was quite difficult hear. to hear. He was talking okay. about the system. Yeah, so he he's still there. He's I agree with there. the last caller saying that the system supports the women, women more, but it yeah. was getting so. Is he still there? I think I thought I thought I thought okay. was still there. Okay, go ahead. Um, um, okay, so I was going to say that we all know that uh, marriage is, a, as they say, social economic construct. So and then um, every explanation really, you know, just further um, reiterates that analogy. So we have. And a social economic construct here in Nigeria where a man provides and a woman submits to that provision. So you find some marriages where a man is unable to provide and the woman is saying it's not like you're doing anything anyway. But a man is supposed to provide, he goes out, he works hard, and to show her appreciation for his working hard and for his provision, he does what he wants of her. So that's a good wife and that's a good husband. Simple. Now you go to a different place. And the socioeconomic construct there is more, we work together, we provide for each other. And so the show of appreciation has to be regard for each other. There is no leader and follower in this relationship. We are partners in this relationship. So if I have decisions to make, I will show you respect by having a conversation with you about it, and then maybe we'll come to a compromise. But it's not unlike, but it's very much unlike the Nigerian construct where the man can just say, you know what, you said you were going somewhere. I just don't feel like you should go anywhere. We hear a lot of Nigerian wives actually say, it. Ah, I would love to go, but my husband has said no. Why did he say no? <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't feel comfortable. I will, I will work on it. Don't worry, I will work on it. <laughs> <laughs> Abroad, there's definitely no. Well, he has said no because ba 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 ba. Give you reasons. And well, and I think I see reason or I don't see reason. You know? But oh, yeah, we're coming. Just, yeah. No, he's not coming, but we'll come. Yeah, on. but we're okay. coming. Okay. So okay. The, the thing is, I think uh, um, communication will work wherever it is that you find yourself. Mm. That sort of relationship where you both respect each other, you ask each other, mm. you communicate, you comprehend each other, will work also in the Nigerian sphere. In fact, it will make it even richer and more mm, interesting. Yeah. Let me take this call from Bissala. I've been holding for a while. Bissala, are you there from London? Yes, I can hear you. Good Very morning, good. Ladies. Good to have you on the show. Go Welcome ahead, Bissala. You're live. Oh, it's so low. I can't really hear you. Good morning. We can hear you clearly. Go ahead, please. Oh, okay. Good morning. So good to hear from you, to, to see you guys. Um, this is a very interesting topic. I really appreciate you guys. First time caller, by Welcome the way, I, feel like I know every one of you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I just want to say, it's just like what BC is saying there. I've, I've been living in UK for the past 20 years now, mm. and I'm married to my husband as well, over 20 years as well, you know? So I think it comes down to your circle. The, the, mm -hmm. the kind of people you mingle with, my sister-in-law, she's here, she's been married over 30-something years. So, and this topic is not really, if you're husband, you both have to respect each other, regardless of what is going on. So it's not even about you living in abroad. The same person, probably because they are in Nigeria, they don't have the support system or whatsoever, I will tell you, even as a wife, if you don't do things properly, your husband could have the custody of the children. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're a woman, that doesn't mean you will have the entire, you know, Just custody that. of the children or whatever. In saying that, mm -hmm. it's still brought down to individual. What, what you want from your marriage, husband should respect the wife and wife vice versa. So my circle, all this, I have close family friends, about 15, and this is not even an issue. So at the end of the day, people who you mingle with goes so, along. So let me ask you this question then. To you, Bissala, what do you oh, I'm therefore? Sorry, I can't hear you. What do you think is therefore the cause of those who have issues within their marriage? Those who are feeling, have any difficulty to adapt. What could be the problem? Well, what could be the problem that have it? Those who are having it difficult to adapt to the to the society, the, the new divorces? world that they are in. See, uh, as we know, many Nigerian men, they have this ego. Just like what BC said, when you, they marry to 
somebody who is a foreigner, you know, let's say an English lady, the respect changes. They remove the ego. They will not care maybe you cook or you don't cook. They say, oh, she's, she's English. We can find something to fix it up. But because <laughs> the person is of your own race, you believe, no, she should understand. Mm. So I still think the first thing remains that they treat us differently from, you know, any other race. So they, I think our men need to come down from their ego. We're in a different society whereby we both work. The, the, the workload is there. Everybody is trying to make an end meet. And you expect your wife to do the same thing they are doing in Nigeria, just That's like it. what you said, Moriah. There's okay. support system. Family Sorry. is there. And Thank also, you, they will say, go and beg your husband. Thank you, Bissola. But here, you... Thank you very much, Bissola. <laughs> Sorry, I just want to add something. I know you would like to go, but... Um... I just wanted to use the plant analogy to answer her. So, you know, if you guys know I have uh, been doing my garden mm -hmm. and everything on plants. There are some plants that when you get, they will tell you this plant does well in the this West. Weather. And so when you get it, and then it's expensive, when you get that plant, there's a way you treat it as a gardener. You, you know, you water it. Because in it's fact, I talk to some of these plants. Oh, I hope you're doing well this morning, blah, blah. Because I know you are not of here. They and there has to be a different way I have to treat that plant to ah. grow here. Meanwhile, I'm in a plant group and I see people who live abroad. They just leave that plant anyhow. And it's just growing any, you know, anyway. So sometimes I guess it's just the fact that you're a foreigner. Let me treat you differently because... All the bad boys of growing up in Africa, he didn't experience it <laughs> long before I finish it. Mm. I just thought okay. I was that, that, that was good. <laughs> I wanted to just also mention that um, we are all a function of our environment, so we must be deliberate about building the right environment. So um, I, I mean, that's even right now, at, for every level of growth, you must create the environment that will nurture the growth. Mm. So if you want the plants to grow, mm. you must create that environment, put the right people. That's number one. Number two is you must communicate what you desire. You cannot, I can't fight Morayo for not doing what I didn't ask her to do. Mm. I can't assume that Morayo will know what I want. And in marriages, it is that lack of communicating expectations that tend to cause breakdown. So mm. I must communicate when, before relocating, have a conversation. Guy at the ESA marriage, they break up for their own. This is how we will run some. So you must communicate your expectations <laughs> so before <laughs> you have that. Okay, one second. Final Let us have a. Um, a companionship mentality. So here, we mm. marry most times out of convenience. I have to marry. My age has come. This is the only man available. You know I mean, I need a wife and all that. I'm but my bills. Here, but especially when you are traveling, before you travel, if you can have the right foundation of your marriage, which is we are partners, we are companions, there is no way I am going to tomorrow that I'm going to have issues because we already understand respect for one another. Right. We already understand that we are partners and we do things together. We are playing for one team. Nobody's leaving one job for the other because of gender. So even if I relocate to Canada tomorrow, it's still the same system I'm, I'm going to yeah. take there. So while we are here, let us institute the right system for our marriages and change our ways. I think okay. both of you, or three of you, have said it all. <laughs> that's, that's the best way we can say it. But um, from my own end, I just feel that well, you're two adults. Mm. And the, if two adults agree to get something to work, it will work. Mm. I think um, so if you're living abroad and you're finding it difficult... Have the conversation, as Marima said over and over again, and let's be sure. And listen, if you feel this can't work, and you're in this environment, can't work for the values you've raised with, no problem. Do what you gotta do, but make sure that at the end of the day, you make a happy choice. Have a fabulous weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Bye for now.